Trend following is an investing strategy where investors buy whatever is going up and sell whatever is going down. That's it. Now, if that sounds too easy to actually work is because I obviously oversimplified what the strategy actually entails. But in general, trend following is used to get you similar returns to buying and holding an asset while attempting to avoid the major drawdowns. Of course, you can't just squint at a price chart and decide whether something is simply going up or down. Systematic traders use a set of rules to determine whether something is a buy or a sell. These are called indicators or signals. You can think of a signal as a pedestrian light. It tells you whether the road is clear and you can cross or whether it's a better decision to wait up. Of course, a good signal would be one that could safely get you across the road more often than not. In other words, it makes you money or at least doesn't get you killed. So a natural question to ask would be, is there an ultimate trend following indicator that could get you consistent success when trend following? Trend following signals have two main components to them that can alter the results of any trend strategy. The first is the look back period. The look back period concerns itself with the length of the trend signal, meaning how far back are we looking into the past to gather data and make decisions today. So for example, a year long moving average would average the closing price of an asset over the past 12 months and then use it to compare to the price today. In trend, if the price is higher than the moving average price, then one would invest. Otherwise, one would sell or even short the security, all depending on what the strategy actually entails. In this example, we would say the look back period is one year. Now, different look back periods will get you different results. A short look back period might react quickly to short term market whims and be able to provide some level of defense in the short term, while likely getting a great amount of whipsaws and higher trading costs overall. A long look back period might not quickly react to every situation in the market and might not even react to quick crashes, while still likely giving you the ability to avoid the major monster drawdowns and reducing transaction costs as compared to the short term signals. But what does the evidence have to say? In the paper Demystifying Managed Futures, the authors find that a 12 month long time series momentum signal worked better than the three and one month signals, having provided an excess return of 17.2% by going long and short 58 different assets from 1985 to 2012. Additionally, Jagadish and Titman find similar results in their seminal paper, Returns to Buying Winners and Selling Losers, this time talking about momentum, which is a close cousin of trend following. And they find that the most successful zero cost strategy selects stocks based on the returns over the previous 12 months and then holds the portfolio for three months. This strategy yields 1.31% per month. Regardless of your strategy, the year long look back period seems to capture the return of behavioral premia associated with trend following and momentum pretty well. Okay, very well. Let's say that optimally trend has historically worked better over year long look back periods. But that doesn't tell us everything. We must look at the type of signal to use. In the paper, Absolute Momentum, a simple rule-based strategy and universal trend following overlay, Gary Antonacci runs a time series momentum rule on various asset classes and finds that all but three asset classes beat their buy and hold counterparts, while all of them have higher risk adjusted returns and all have shallower drawdowns. This time series momentum rule looks at the returns of an asset over the past year and compares it to the returns of cash. If the asset beats cash, you go long. If cash beats the asset, you invest in cash. Historically, this has been a great signal to use when trend following. But is it the only one that's able to achieve these sorts of returns. Well, in the paper, a quantitative approach to tactical asset allocation, Map Faber utilizes a moving average to trend follow five asset classes, namely US stocks, foreign stocks, bonds, real estate, and commodities. He finds that the moving average worked historically in being able to provide similar returns to buy and hold while providing shallower drawdowns. Additionally, there are other trend following signals that are worth examining that have some merit of their own. But while there does seem to be some indication that staying close to a year long look back period provided higher risk adjusted returns than constantly trading with shorter look back periods. When it comes to signal types, there is no reason to believe that one has the right answer. An ensemble approach could be more tenable in the long term. So what's important here is to be able to maintain simple trading systems that you are able to understand 
and to not necessarily overcomplicate things. See, one thing that tends to happen when trend following is that investors can sometimes backtest and backtest till they find the perfect indicator. However, that perfect indicator is likely just a survivor of the data and may be totally overfit, which would likely mean that going forward, it won't have any effectiveness whatsoever. In that sense, choosing a time series and moving average rule ensemble can be a sensible solution. They are simple to understand and not as susceptible to overfitting. So is there an ultimate trend following indicator? Not really. There are general guidelines on what has worked best in the past and some reasons why keeping it simple may be the best answer for investors as a whole. Here at Alpha Architect, our goal is to empower investors through education. We're an asset management firm that focuses on delivering affordable alpha to our clients. If you want more educational content like this, head to alphaarchitect.com. I'll see you there.